See, anybody can ask you questions, but you don't have to answer. You don't have to tell anyone your name, your telephone number. You don't even have to tell the policeman at the scene of an accident. You have to be prepared to go into a cell for a few hours. See, many people are unable to exercise their rights because they're not able to withstand the intimidation, the coercive effect of the policeman or the government official who, acting under colour of law, intimidates you into giving the information against your will or over your objection. You have to answer my questions. If you don't answer them, I am going to arrest you and charge you with obstruction of an officer in the performance of his duty. See, that alone, all by itself, for 99% of people, it just chills them to the bone. And so while it may anger you, you might say to yourself, well, I don't like being threatened by this. You'll complain about it. You won't like it. You'll think there's something wrong with it. And because of our fear and our ignorance, 99% of you will start answering those questions pretty damn quick. So if you're not prepared to go into a cell for a few hours, then you can't exercise your rights because they will test you at every turn. And when police officers arrest people and they do so without authority, that's called false arrest and false imprisonment. And it goes on all the time. You know, a lot of people are claustrophobic, they can't handle sitting in a cell for a few hours. And the policeman knows this, so he locks you up. The threat of the inconvenience of the time will get most people to answer any question the policeman asks. He's trained that way. He simply makes statements that have no legal veracity whatsoever. Threats. He coerces you into answering questions that can be used against you in a court of law. And they do use them against you. You have to be prepared to go into a cell at any time, at the drop of a hat, if that's what's required to protect your privacy and protect your rights. And if not, then you can be cunningly coerced into waiving your rights at any time. That's the difference between a master and a servant. A master and a servant. The master asks the questions and the servant answers them. If you are answering someone else's questions, you are the servant. It's as simple as that. It's not rocket science. The guy that's asking the question is in the master position, the master-servant relationship. Do I really want the police officer to be in the master position or in the servant position? You see, I believe that police officers are servants of the public. I see myself as the master employing the police officer to protect me and my property against unlawful intrusion. Let's get our position straight here. Who's the boss and who's the servant? Now, as soon as you get that into your head, you'll be one step closer to the truth. Remember, policing has changed in this country and it's changed in the United States. They're no longer the police officers you remember. They're no longer your friend. They are your adversary. Now, they're all good people, but as I said in my last video, they will do as they're told. And what they want is your money and your freedom. Law enforcement officers are trained to bluff you into making denials, into making statements, and they will appear friendly, and they will appear reasonable, and they will appear willing to help resolve the matter. They will pose as your friend, and they will tempt you to talk about it and to appear sympathetic. Don't fall for it. Say nothing. Deny nothing. Give them nothing. Stick your tongue between your teeth and bite down hard. You do not exist. You have no past. You have no address. You have no name. You have no national insurance number or social security number. You give them nothing whatsoever to work with. Now, having established what we cannot and must not say, let's establish what we should say. So a police officer approaches you and says, excuse me, sir, would you mind if we ask you some questions? What you do immediately, you reach for your mobile phone and you activate the voice recording option and you hold your phone up in plain view and you make sure the officer realizes that you're recording the conversation. And then you say, hello, officer, I recognize your contact. What is the nature of the intended detention? If he says you cannot record this conversation, what you say is, in that case, am I free to go? If he says, yes, you're free to go, you say, thank you for your time, goodbye. If he says, no, you're not free to go. You say again, what is the nature of the intended detention? Always asking questions, always in the master position. If he refuses to tell you what he's stopping you for, you ask him, did you witness me breach the peace? To which he will reply, yes or no. If he says no, you say, I am now reserving my right not to speak to a peace officer who has not witnessed me breach the peace. Thank you and good day, and you walk away. If he asks you for some identification, you ask him if you're obliged to carry identification. If he asks you for your name, you ask him if you're obliged to give him your name. 
The answer to both of those questions is no. If he says yes, he's acting fraudulently. He's not acting as a lawful peace officer. Again, you say, am I free to go? Am I free to go? Am I free to go? That's it. That's all you say. Am I free to go? If they continue to detain you, am I under arrest? That's all you say. Am I under arrest? Am I free to go? Am I under arrest? Am I free to go? Am I under arrest? If they continue to detain you, and they give you a sense that you're going to be arrested, you immediately say, Officer, I'm a peaceful man. If you're going to arrest me, there will be no need for force or violence. However, you are obliged to note that I am operating under protest and duress at all times. I reserve all of my rights at all times and waive none of my rights at any time for any cause or reason. And then if they take you down to the station, the golden rule, keep your mouth shut, say nothing, shut up. You do not give them permission to take your fingerprints. You do not give them consent to ask you any further questions. You do not give them consent to put their hands on you in any way, shape or form. You do not have consent to touch me, officer. You see, the key here is that they can only police by consent. When they're working with statutory regulations, they need your consent. Now, if you've broken the law, and by the law I mean if you've killed someone, or if you have been in a serious accident and you've harmed someone else or damaged their property, or you've committed fraud in your contracts, then you've broken the law, and you need to take your punishment like a man. But if we're talking about statutory regulations, they all require your consent. Now, the definition of a statute is a legislated rule of society given the force of law by consent of the governed. Now, that's not consent of the majority of the governed. That's consent of the governed. That means you. Nothing happens without your consent with regards to statutory legislation. Nothing. All the while you're in the cell, you just relax, get your head down, get an hour's sleep, get a couple of hours sleep, ignore all of the confrontational stuff they throw at you, ignore all of the intimidation. It's all just tactics to get you to speak. You are not required to give your fingerprints. You are not required to give your DNA. You are not required to give a blood or a urine sample. Not without your consent. Now, if you want to waive your rights, you can do that at any time by opening your mouth or giving them what they want. But the only way you're going to get out of that cell in a few hours or 12 hours or 24 hours or whatever it is, is by shutting up without the information that you give them out of your own mouth, they have to release you. It's as simple as that. See, what you'll find when you're asking these officers questions, instead of blindly submitting to their faux authority, is that they'll look at you like you've just shown a dog a new card trick. It's a completely alien experience for them, being asked questions. They're used to asking the questions. You don't ask me questions. I'm an officer of the law. Until you've established probable cause, my friend, there is a Roman maximum in law that says equality before the law is paramount and mandatory. That means before you've established that I've done anything wrong, you and I are on equal footing, my friend, no matter what uniform you're wearing. So you will treat me with respect and you will speak across to me and not down to me, or I will not assist you in any way, shape or form. Now, most officers are very courteous and polite, but I've been witness to many abuses of power especially since the new statutory legislation came out. Stop and search powers are being abused left, right and centre, and the ones that are suffering are the ones that don't know. They simply have to say, no, I do not consent. I'm not consenting to any searches today. Thank you very much. Am I free to go? Am I under arrest? Am I free to go? Am I under arrest? Now, the law rabbit hole is a very deep one, and it's also a very accessible one. You need to go to a site called thinkfree.ca and there you'll find many, many tools that will give you a lot of freedom. Along with many friendly and very experienced people who have a great understanding of the law and know how to deal with these lawyers and these police officers that are operating illegally and unlawfully. And they will give you a great deal of insight into what's actually going on in the world at the moment. Also, essential reading, absolutely essential reading is How I Clobbered Every Bureaucratic Cash Confiscatory Agency Known to Man by Mary Elizabeth Croft. The title's a bit of a mouthful, but there is life-changing information in there. Life-changing, and I do not say that lightly. Now, if you can see the value in this broadcast, please give it a five rating and forward it to all of your friends. It's very important that we get this information out to the people out there who are being abused by the powers that be.
If you wish to contact me, ask me questions, please do so. I'm always very happy to receive your emails. Thanks for listening.